Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is Sean Smith, and I'm a proud alumni of Scan Harbor Performing Arts Program. Um, currently, I'm a freshman at Howard University. I'm an acting major, and I'm incredibly honored and excited to be able to take part in tonight's celebration and be tonight's MC. Um, aside from that, I also would like to take this opportunity to personally thank all the incredible instructors at Scan Harbor and all the staff who supported me and all the work that they do. If I'm being really honest, I wouldn't be who I am today without all the love and support that they've given me. And aside from that, um, now to officially kick off our event, I would like to introduce Jamil Ossesweat, who is president of the Scan Harbor Board of Directors. I came to Scan. Hey, sorry, I think I had a technical difficulty, but I'm Jamel Oasis Sweat. I came to SCAN in 1986 as a homeless child when my mother was referred to SCAN through the family court. And now I'm the president of the board of directors. I was a resident of East Harlem as a child and I know firsthand the impact both SCAN and the Harbor have in our community. Today, we are celebrating the merger of SCAN and Boys and Girls Harbor. I am proud to be the president of the board of directors of our new organization. And we have already hit the ground running doing the work our community needs. Just weeks into my presidency at SCAN, Richard Ash, Lou Zuckman and I met with the chairman of the Harbor, Steve Danhauser, about a possible merger between our organizations. While sitting at his office at Wild Gotcha, I realized the importance of combining the organizations. Over the next year, our two boards work together in ways I can never be more proud of to create a blended family. Sometimes it's hard to remember that we were not always one organization. Unfortunately, we never got a honeymoon. We went straight from a merger to navigating through one of the most stressful periods in the history of nonprofits during the pandemic shutdown. Funding was being slashed and the needs of our community were being amplified. Our employees worked to ensure food was distributed, that programs operated virtually, that masks were distributed and our board met tirelessly to ensure our continued operation and that we could plug the funding gaps being created every day. The amplification of the talents of our board members as a combined unit has been undeniable. I feel like the captain of an all-star team. We also have an advisory board with talent so diverse and so immense that they could replace any board I've ever been on with ease. Somewhere in my childhood, I learned a story about some children playing a game on some railroad train tracks. The goal was to balance and walk as far as you could along a rail. Two younger kids asked some older kids if they could play as well. They were told no. The older kids kept on trying to walk as far as they could. Some got 20 feet, some got 30 feet, one got even further. The younger kids persisted, they kept asking to play. Realizing they wouldn't stop until they were allowed to try, they asked again and again and the kids said, all right, you can try once. The older kids laughed, they taunted them, but one kid got on one side of the railroad tracks and the other got on the other. They joined hands, stepped up, and they walked a mile down the train tracks holding hands, balancing each other effortlessly the whole way until they stopped to find new adventure. Alone, they were limited, but together, they were better. One day, we will come together in person to celebrate. Until then, we celebrate coming together. We were amazing apart but we are better together and that has made all the difference. That being said, I now have the pleasure of introducing Lou Zuckman, our executive director and a former Freedom Rider. Lou works tirelessly with our staff and our board to ensure that the needs of the communities we serve are met. He has been my friend and mentor for 20 years. Ladies and gentlemen, Lou Zuckman. Good evening. Uh... Last week, we, uh, we were doing a little rehearsal run through of the show and Steve Danhausen and I were talking and I said to Steve, my God, if it wasn't for the merger, where would uh, Harvard be? And Steve said, hey. Uh, and then Lolita told this wonderful story about her father when he was 18, 
driving through East Harlem trying to uh, get young people to attend the Harbor Camp. Uh, I thought that was a beautiful story. And, and uh, you know, this is the third merger that Stan has ha had. Uh, first was, was with Jaws for Youth. Second one was with LaGuardia Memorial House. Uh, and as Jamel said, despite the pandemic, uh, we've come through this uh, with flying colors. And uh, I guess one thing I've been thinking about over these last uh, few months, and Lolita really touched on it, was Tony Duke and Lou Zuckman, because Tony and I are so, sort of the same age, same certainly the same generation. And while Tony came from a, a more privileged world, uh, I grew up in Forest Hills, uh, uh, Queens, which was a, a Jewish immigrant community during World War II. Uh, as Tony was driving through East Harlem, uh, trying to get young people to go to the Harvard camp, I was a freedom rider uh, down in Mississippi. Uh, but uh, soon I came up to East Harlem and here Tony was beginning Harvard. I never met Tony. And I was coaching an all Puerto Rican basketball team working at Casino Marina. And uh, Boys and Girls Harbor grew and Scan grew slowly over these decades. But one of the things I found interesting as I read about Boys and Girls Harbor and met some of the alumni from Boys and Girls Harbor was the way Tony saw things. Yes, the day camp, or I'm sorry, summer camp was important for uh, young people and recreation was important for young people and train of arts was important for young people. But Tony saw that that wasn't enough. Uh, and that uh, the, edu the educational crisis that our community was facing, which was coming on our young people, uh, you needed to do more. So Tony ensured that Boys and Girls Harbor broadened its, its program, program context. When I first came to SCAN, we basically just worked with at-risk families. And Jamel was one of the very first young people I met. Uh, but when Jamel won the Westinghouse Award and was on the front page of the New York Times, uh, our board was thrilled and they said to me, uh, gee, Lou, do we have other young people like Jamel? I said, we, we have many, young, many other young people like Jamel if we just nurture them. So we started a program called Reach for the Stars, our, our upper band program. And as I met with uh, many of the Harbor alumni, Judge Pardo, Bob North, and others, uh, there was that same spirit. Uh, both the same spirit that existed in, in Boys and Girls Harbor existed in SCAN. Uh, and this young man, Sean Smith, that you've had a chance to meet. I don't know Sean that well, but I've got to know him a little over the last two years, and he's a really special young man. And he is what we are about. Uh, and I haven't told Sean how uh, uh, thrilled I am that he's going to Howard University. Uh, Sean, Three Freedom Riders on the very first bus came from Howard. If it wasn't for Stokely Carmichael, Hank Thomas, and John Moody, who all attended at Howard as you do, there wouldn't have been a Freedom Ride. Uh, and so, so pleased to see uh, Sean. I've gotten to know him somewhat over the last two years, and I can't tell you how impressed I am with his, his humility, his uh, uh, intelligence. As you see uh, on your screen, Sean was one of the uh, young people that uh, we that were, were given internships with uh, the Garden of Dreams. Uh, and he received a, a scholarship from the Garden of Dreams to help support his, uh, his education. But more importantly, he represented us with, with, uh, with a quality that was very special. As Jamel mentioned, there's the pandemic now, and uh, the pandemic has tested my soul at times. I've been depressed. I, I felt at times uh, like I'm a victim or we are victims, and here we, we are beginning to merge and everything's wonderful and boom. Uh, but what's, what sustained myself through, through this was the support of, of our family, our SCAN family. Every week, Steve Danhausen, Jamel, and Craig Overlander and I met for about three months. Every, I believe it was every Wednesday from 12 to 1. Uh, 
And those, those meetings were invaluable to me, gave me the kind of support that one needs. Uh, Lior Cohn, one of our uh, board members, offering to get uh, a performing artist from uh, his world of, of Google Music and, and YouTube to uh, speak and perform for our young people. Uh, so many board members have called me just to offer me support. That support's very important. Several years ago at a scan gala, I, I, I said to our uh, attendees, if I had to uh, put into context the one thing I think that we do that's really special, is that we create family for young people who don't have that, for many of our young people who don't have family, who don't have anyone in their lives to give them the kind of support that if, if you don't get, you, you're not gonna make it in this world. And I talk a little bit about my, my childhood where I didn't have that. And how what I try to do with SCAN is, is, is uh, provide that. And I think sometimes people don't understand how important that is. But I, I have to tell you how impressed I was when I met the Harbor alumni and how they all emphasize how, how, how critical that was. It was uh, uh, Honor was for me to meet Judge Pardo, who's always been uh, to me one of the real heroes of East Holland, one of the real special people, a Harbor alumnus. Our last three Scan Harbor board meetings, where we had almost 100% attendance each meeting, I can't tell you how good that makes me feel, and I really mean that. Uh, So the, 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 the spirit of both of our organizations have, have a common uh, path and a common focus. And let me just quickly tell you how that uh, helped us through this COVID-19 crisis. Uh, one, uh, we established food distribution uh, sites in, uh, or, or food distribution centers at 10 of our Stan Harbor program sites. Our family renewal center has remained open from March till now. We have provided circles of healing where we have given our staff a, 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 uh, the opportunity to process their experiences, both personally and at work. And we're now going to be doing that with uh, our, our families and our community. We're one of only 10 or 11 uh, CBOs in the city of New York that was, that was chosen by the mayor's office to provide CBO uh, engagement outreach, which we'll talk about in a second. We have opened our administrative offices six weeks ago, and we're, we're one of the only uh, programs in East Harm that is open every day. Uh, all of our centers are open now. We do this safely, but we do this understanding that's our mission. We've received over a quarter of a million dollars in foundation grants to support all of the activities I've talked about. The Citizens Committee of New York, through Steve's uh, connections, Steve has a lot of good connections with us, uh, has given us a grant to support our Youth Ambassadors Program, where we uh, engage many of our young people uh, in our different uh, community centers in youth leadership activities. Our Wagner Center, where uh, uh, Wagner Houses is considered the most violent development in the city of New York. Uh, but trust me, there, there are more, more good people there, many, many more good people than violent people. We had a wonderful summer where 15 of our, our young men uh, worked with us in, in a program called Vibe, who are now some of our youth ambassadors. So, and, and as Jamel said, we, we are definitely better together. And when we come out of all this lunacy, we, we are gonna be a very powerful, uh, mean, meaningful agency. So uh, it gives me pleasure to in introduce Tiffany McFadden. Tiffany is the director of our T2 CBO uh, COVID-19 engagement uh, project. So Tiffany, why don't you uh, take, a, take it away and share with people what we're doing. Thank you, Will. And thank you everybody for attending this evening. 
My name is Tiffany McFadden, and yes, I am the program director of the T2 Community-Based Organization and Great Engagement Project. Um, it is an honor to be here to talk about the work that we're doing, but most importantly, to stand on two very powerful legacies. And so the T2 Scan Harbor team stands on the Scan Harbor mission, which aims to assist and support the most vulnerable in East Harlem, Harlem in the South Bronx. And I would even go beyond to say that we have gone beyond those three areas and have reached out to spaces and places that need us all across NYC. Since August 2020, the T2 team has been on the ground and in the streets sharing personal protective equipment as well as printed materials that informs res residents of ways to keep people safe and healthy throughout East Harlem, Harlem, Brooklyn, and the Bronx. As a team, we've managed to create a multifaceted collective that transcends age, ethnicity, and gender. We are a collective of people who know firsthand the power and resiliency of East Harlem and the South Bronx. We know this because these are the same communities that raised and loved us as young people. In the last two months, we've been successful with mass distribution, distributing over 100,000 masks, over a thousand bottles of hand sanitizer and well over 500 posters and flyers to residents to make sure that they share this information in their residential spaces. Our strategy is simple. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. Instead, tap into the community's power, resiliency, and build from there. We've been able to collaborate with organizations such as the World Central Kitchen, Common Pantry, and others. In addition to those organizations, we've also been in contact with our community partners, such as Union Settlement, such as, uh, who, who else? Who else can we name in this, in this particular time? Hunter School of Social Work, and so many others. And in addition to that, building partnerships and cultivating opportunities for the T2 team to collaborate and create spaces of joy is a part of our aim to promote health and safety. And so we stand in this moment being very grateful of the opportunity to be outside, making connections with people, but also that there we, we have this great legacy that we are able to stand on um, with both SCAN and Boys and Girls Harbor. So that's my piece and thank you all. Okay, well, hello everybody again. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Um, we're now coming to a very special part of tonight's celebration. Um, for many years, the Black Box Theater space at the Harbors Building on Fifth Avenue has been an epicenter of music, dance, and theater instruction that has benefited hundreds of youth in the local area. Um, personally, I've probably spent hundreds of hours there myself just doing dance rehearsals and taking classes and rehearsing productions. And honestly, it's become a second home to me, really. And with all that being said, we would love to share with you some wonderful news about the theater space. And it's my pleasure to introduce Scan Harbor board member and the former Harbor board chairman, Stephen Denhauser. Thank you, Sean. And good evening, everyone. Um, I just want to, um, to uh, let everybody know that it's my task this evening to pay tribute to my dear friend, the late Tony Duke. When Tony was 19 years old, he started what was then known as Boys Harbor as a summer camp experience out in East Hampton for underserved youth. That mushroomed into a multi-dimensional organization offering programs in education, social services, and the performing arts, and serving thousands of children over time in Harlem, the South Bronx, and surrounding communities. Tony was a very special man, and uh, he could have done any, anything in his life, given his heritage, but he decided to devote himself to the cause of inner city youth. Tony had an uncanny ability to draw people toward himself and make people feel good about themselves. 
He will be loved forever by countless students, alumni, board members, counselors, teachers, and the like. Um, as, as Lou mentioned, Tony had a great affection for the alumni of the Harbor. He talked regularly about their accomplishments. And if you get a chance to talk to Harbor alums, you'll realize the impact that the Harbor and Tony had on their lives. Um, in one other thing I should mention about Tony, he was way ahead of his time from a diversity and inclusion perspective. Customs and traditions were honored and celebrated at the Harbor, not sandpapered over like they are in many other organizations. Now, over time, um, when, when I talk about Tony's devotion to the, uh, to the Harbor alums, there was a book which will tell you all you need to know about his relationship with them and his impact upon them. And that book was uh, Diamonds in the Rough. So if you have not read it, I encourage you all to read it. Now, as time went on and um, Tony and, and the board and I became concerned about the financial stability of the harbor for the future, we worked hard together to identify strengths and weaknesses, flag inefficiencies, and try to right the ship. And that's what led to our discussions with SCAN and the Lou and Jamel and the SCAN board, and ultimately into the consummation of the merger between SCAN and Harbor. And that, that merger, as Lou and Jamel have indicated, has been seamless, effective, and impactful. I really have to thank the SCAN board for all of its support during that merger period. Uh, we had lots of issues to address, uh, but I think the period was built upon trust, transparency, and integrity. I also have to thank the then Harbor Board for their devotion to Tony and the Harbor and the students that we serve. I also have to clearly mention the work that Craig Overlander, uh, Harbor President at the time, did over the years to make that merger possible. This was a challenging endeavor, but we pulled it off and we are better together. Now, we were, uh, we were sitting at a SCAN Harbor board meeting not too long ago when we were trying to figure out ways to properly honor Tony Duke. And I believe it was Lou who suggested at the time that we think about renaming the Black Box Theater in Tony's honor. And so tonight, it's my privilege and honor to officially announce that we are renaming the Black Box Theater as the Tony Duke Black Box Theater. I have no doubt that Tony would be proud. He was a remarkable man, and again, much loved by all. I'm now gonna turn the mic over to Tony's daughter, Lolita Reed Duke. She is a distinguished member of the Scan Harbor Board and a great supporter of the programs that you just heard about. Lolita? Hey, everybody. Um, on behalf of my father, Tony Duke, and the rest of the Duke family, I'd like to say thank you for honoring our father and honoring the work that he's done in underserved communities in New York. I know for certain he personally gained more from the friendships and the love at the harbor than he could have ever dreamed. And we're so proud to see his work, legacy, and love of community continue. Tony was determined to do his part to level the playing field and give all kids the opportunity to expand their education and go as far as their imagination could take them. Almost um, today, almost 100 years later, <laughs> Um, I am so grateful my father's vision and life's work continues through Scan Harbor. I know he would be so proud of all that has been accomplished, and he would especially be grateful to all the Scan Harbor staff, Scan Harbor board, and of course, alum, who have worked so hard to continue his legacy. And a very special thank you to Jamel and Dick Ash for being our bridge. And of course, Steve Danhauser and Craig Overlander who led the Harbor Board and worked tirelessly to make this new beginning with Scan Harbor happen. Dad had great foresight to pass the torch along to this crew. I know for certain Dad would be grateful for all the amazing things Scan has brought to the partnership, including Lou, who I know he would have loved. So thank you for honoring my father with the naming of the Black Box Theater, but most importantly, thank you for picking up where he left off and continuing his vision. Your hard work and dedication to Scan Harbor is the true tribute. And now a special, a special new video filmed in the Tony Duke Theater, Better Together. Thank you. We have to do with say 
so much of what we need, oh We won't waste a single day We are not falling, it's destiny's calling Two powers we could not deny Now we have changed it, could you hear me I'm saying? We're together for the rest of our lives We're better together in our apart We're better together in the truth And don't you know we are here on this earth So much better together, it's true We are far from God Now that we are merged now too Now that we are merged now too Scared hard but it's running up town We always want Thank you all for joining us and participating in our virtual celebration. On behalf of everyone at Scan Harbor, we appreciate your being a part of our journey. I look forward to the amazing work we will all continue to do together. Thank you to both the Scan and Harbor boards for agreeing to go on this journey together. Thank you, Sean, Tiffany, Steve, Gabriella, Bill, Lou, and Lolita for the work you've done on this celebration. Thank you to our staff and wonderful program participants for their hard work and performances. You are about to see an amazing video produced at Scan Harbor and called How Many Times. How Many Times was originally developed in our Finding Our Voices series as a dedication to mothers who lost their sons to gun violence. It was reimagined as a virtual performance in June of this year during the COVID-19 pandemic to provide a representation of the feelings of many in our communities and in our nation as to the importance of equal rights and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present How Many Times.
many times do I have to tell you we go on and on and on fight? Oh, how many times go on and on and on fight? Oh, how many times? What incredible work that this this program has put on, especially given the circumstances of this pandemic. But other than that, everybody, thank you again for joining us this evening. Um, if you'd like to share this video recording of tonight's event, uh, we'll be posting it on the Dan Harbor's new in your inbox. But other than that, uh, be safe, be healthy, and honestly, have a